Summer 2019, way up in the northwest corner of Montana, area called the Yak, home of the Unabomber, Bigfoot, one of the largest unprotected wilderness left in the lower 48. Down south, you can see a big thunderstorm over the cabinets. My buddy and I went up, up to this lookout, found a great place to camp, about 7,800 feet. Nothing like eating fresh mushrooms after you've been picking them, especially when you bring all the goods to cook with them. Oh man, so, so good. Check that out. CC! Now we're going hunting. Hidden, baby. <laughs> Hidden behind that rock. These mushrooms. I've heard from Larry Evans of the Western Montana Mycological Association. They're being called Belitus Grand Edulis. Beautiful. I don't know what they are. I sure could find out, but uh, these are just coming out. As they mature, those tips become super purple. And over here, what is that that I espy? A beautiful baby just coming out. Huh? I am for Jenny, baby. Come to Papa. Uh, but the good news, we're finding a lot of uh, really young ones, beautiful, best eating shape. Some might say, oh, that's small, let it grow. But that's, I think it bigger. They just seem to get more sponginess. I don't think they get more weight. So this is a very dense, thick mushroom, loads of flavor. You don't have to cut any of the pores off of these too. That's the other thing, as they get bigger, you gotta remove the pores, the spongy material, cause uh, I guess it have, can have a laxative effect, unless you want to use it for that. But a little beauty, porcini, little piggy. this uh, cool little truffle I found. It was in a hole where a squirrel had been digging, but then I guess he left it. But it wasn't uh, this color when I picked it. It was totally white. No, it's just like rolling it around in my hand. I found this area. I found a lot of my picking areas. Arizona, Montana especially. Really from driving around. There's a beautiful Amanita muscaria. A lot of Amanitas are indicator species for big boletes. So if you're somewhere up in the mountains hiking or exploring and you see them, start looking around, you may find some porcini with them. 
there's a big white Amanita. It's all over Montana. The wardiness is super, super big. This area fruits in July and August. Even early July, I'm learning every year. And it comes up from snowmelt. Of course, when we get wet Junes, which is uh, what we always hope for in the Northwest, <coughs> interior Northwest, because that stopped the fires from happening. I'm sure it's a good season when it rains, but it doesn't seem to really be dependent on that. And so every year I'm finding new areas and going to the different ranges in Montana and seeing this phenomena of uh, big porcini crops up in generally higher elevation, mixed conifers, north slopes. Montana is such a big state and not huge number of roads up in the high country like in Colorado because of the mining, Arizona because of the logging and logging in Washington. So I'll often see something I'm looking for, see some stuff brooding and then stop, park, you start making circles from there. And, you know, you're not just picking from the road, but just the math of driving past so much more acreage in high country, still after many years of picking is how I found most of my big spots. I learned from some responsible old timer commercial pickers in Oregon years ago when you picked a big king bolete's pull them gently kind of shave off whatever mycelial growth is still there put it back in the soil and kind of cover up the soil not sure how much this helps but uh, always want to take care of the gifts and the bounty mushroom picking in a lot of ways is like fishing or hunting Picking and going out there is, of course, one of the great joys. Being in nature, looking at beautiful country, going to wild places. But then you need to take care of them and uh, eat them so you can have them for a while. And learn how to really enjoy them. The bolites will deteriorate really quickly. I especially learned this in Arizona you're going up picking nine ten thousand feet I'd be come back home to lower elevation and just even in the car and even in a cooler as the temperatures increase the insect activity the fungus gnats the bolites are known for get very active so cleaning don't really want to wash them with water you want to just get the dirt off quickly and efficiently as you can. You start washing with water, they just start absorbing that water. And then you've got to redry that out. Great thing about the Montana Porcini and the snow melt activity uh, is they seem to be very dry about the time that they're at their best quality. So you want to use air more than heat to dry don't really want to put them in your oven unless you just don't have any other choice luckily I have a big greenhouse that's contained gets hot and have lots of fans in summertime in Montana especially by July it's usually pretty dry low humidities any kind of screens you can find it's a good way to use up old window screens that might be laying around on your property or someone you know's property. Slice them up. You'll notice that these have a much prettier color than ones that you buy at the store. You can't buy this quality at the store. And many of the porcini you find at Whole Foods or natural grocers, they're not they're not Boletus edulis. There's some other Bolete. It probably comes from Asia. Also, all big boletes, after about a year, they all start to get this tangy, smoky flavor, which some people say they enjoy, but that's not this white, nutty beauty 
So these are, the stuff I'm picking up here is about half dried. Kind of put them out, get about, well, you know, gauge by looking at it, 30 to 60% of the moisture out where they're still flexible, but they're still, they're still wet. They still have some weight to them. And I learned a couple of years ago to preserve this method using vinegar. It's not really pickling. Essentially what you're trying to do is acidify the mushrooms so that that will preserve them. I learned this method from Hank Shaw. He's a great outdoor chef and has a lot of books. Buck Buck Moose. He has various vlogs and blogs. I look at his recipes often and then I end up not following him very much, but he gives me the confidence to kind of go ahead and do my own thing. So here I'm using good quality white vinegar, one half, about 7%, and then good spring water. Boiling it, get your set up there, get your colander, something to drain, some old towels, let the vinegar water get hot, and then put those half dried slices inside. Push them down in there, They'll start bubbling a lot, and you can kind of tell when they're like done. The texture changes, and they almost become like meat. I've been doing this process for a couple of years now, and they last, I'd say at least six months in the refrigerator. You do have to refrigerate them. This isn't a pressure cooker, long-term temperature, room temperature storage method. This is for the refrigerator. But the great thing about it, there's really no waste. You put them in oil. You'll see later as I get them acidified and cooked in the vinegar water, I'll put them in oil. And what's happening now is this vinegar water is getting infused with these fresh top quality grade A porcini. So you get your infused vinegar that then you can use for salads or meats or sauces or you know variety of possibilities with your porcini infused vinegar. Depending on the amount of mushrooms you have, as you go along your vinegar water will start cooking down so you may have to add some more but I end up just using one pot so at the end all my porcini infused vinegar is in one container you kind of smush it like that get some of the excess back in but there usually isn't much you can actually see viscosity forming in the vinegar now it's almost getting this syrupy texture which is uh, truly divine. I'm sure it's some use in French cooking or it's existed before. So here I'm at the end and I'm uh, straining it a bit, getting the bigger pieces out. Got my funnel, got my cool, unusual bottle. Another reason to keep old bottles or wine bottles or corks. And uh, look at that. That's just from fresh porcini. So now after I've got my mushrooms all cooked in the vinegar water, you can also hold off for a couple of days if you're busy or have something else to do. They'll keep in the fridge for a while. Whatever oil you like, butter would be good too. And then start sauteing them. You're not really cooking them that much. You're really just trying to get the oil in put a little wine, get the garlic, salt, pepper, whatever else you like. Went out to the garden, got some chives. I don't put many spices or herbs in my mushroom mixes because I really want to taste the mushrooms and it's such a treat to have these fresh. Sometimes a little thyme. Plus you can always add things if you want to dishes that you're gonna use these mushrooms in. These can be put in meat dishes, 
egg dishes. They're great for hors d'oeuvre trays, with cheeses. They're great just to eat alone, sandwiches, some good bread, crackers. It's really fun to take food like this out camping. A little salt, a little pepper. So just kind of going to get all that oil in there, bring it up to temperature. If you want to toast the edges a little bit, that's certainly, certainly good. For years I would always eat and serve porcini fresh grilled. It's nothing like that. Nothing like fresh grilled porcini on the fire, like, like veal. But I'm tired of just drying them, so I tried this the past couple of years, and I have not been disappointed. I, no matter how much I make, they get eaten. Also great to give as gifts. Find really cool jars like this too. Put it in the jar. You want to kind of compress it down. Also what I've done is go out hunting, get a batch, you know, fill like half that jar, and then next week you go out and find some more. Do the whole process again. And then once they're packed down, put some more oil on it to keep the moisture and oxygen out, like, like you would store pesto in your refrigerator. And then again, that oil gets infused with the mushrooms. There's no waste. You can just pull some of that oil out sometime if you're sauteing something. Um, it'll have that porcini infused flavor. Here you go. This is like a week later. You know, you see I come back, fill in a jar, went out hunting again, did the same process. Getting more vinegar, more porcini infused oil. I've got some in my fridge now that it, I've had since July and they're still just as delicious as ever. Really good with just simple, good quality bread or crackers. Don't really need anything else. There you have it. Give it a try. Send me some questions. I've tried this with other mushrooms, with morel, same process. I've even tried it with mushrooms that were totally dry and it works pretty well. But the half dry method, you get your infused oil and vinegar. It gets a lot better. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy Passion of Forager.